31, welcome to chapter 6, specifically section 6.1. So in this chapter, we're going to learn all about exponential functions. We're going to evaluate exponential functions, find the equation of an exponential function. We're going to talk about money, one of my favorite topics. We're going to use the compound interest formulas. And then we're going to evaluate exponential functions with base E. So I'll be talking about this, this number. It might look like a letter, but E is actually a number. Um, so before we do that, before we hop right in, I want to take a moment and compare linear growth against exponential growth. And I want us to see the difference in the growth rates. And specifically, as we go through example one, I think you're gonna notice that exponential growth is way faster than linear growth. And I always joke about this, where if you have a job and you always and you have a salary schedule like I do as a teacher they put us on this big big salary schedule it's got rows and columns in it and you get um, you move down the rows based on years of experience and you move over in the columns based on um, your education level and I always joke that whenever if you have a job where you have some kind of salary schedule you should ask for an exponential growth uh, an exponential growth salary schedule as opposed to linear growth. And I, I used to tell, I was a high school teacher and I used to tell my principal that I would start, you could pay me for my first year, you could pay me $1. And as long as you doubled my salary every year, I'd be willing to work for you. And you might think that's nuts, but by the time I hit my 30th year, I'd be having a real nice chunk of change at that point. Um, so whenever, you can talk about getting a raise. Go up to your boss and just say, you'd like an exponential raise rather than a linear raise. Uh, he or she might say no, but it's worth a try. If they ever say yes, you might be looking at a lot more money than you thought you, you, might, act, uh, you might be getting. All right, so with all that, with all my whole like, um, ask for an exponential raise, not a linear raise. Let's move on to the actual um, problems here in example one. So we're gonna fill in the missing values for f of x and g of x. And take note that f of x in this case is an exponential function. And I say it's exponential because we see it's a power, right? We have 2 to the x. The base is 2 and the exponent is x. So for f of x, my variable is in the exponent. That makes this an exponential function. Here you can see I have g of x. It's a linear function, 2 times x. All right, my, I, I technically have a power here. This is x to the first power. But my variable is in the base of the power where here my variable is in the exponent of the power. All right, so with that, I'm gonna scooch this page up and we're gonna take a look at this table. Let me make sure I've got it all in view there. All right, so let's take a look at this table and see if we can pick apart some values. So when x is zero, let's take a look. I'm gonna do the entire f column and then I'll do the entire g column just so we can spot some patterns. All right, if x is zero, two to the zero is one, all right? If x is one, two to the one is two. If x is two, two squared is four. If x is three, and this would become two cubed, right? Two to the third power and two cubed is eight. And maybe you're starting to see a pattern here. All right, if I plug in four, two to the fourth is 16, and then two to the fifth is 32 and two to the sixth is 64. And if you struggle with that, no problem, you can always go to your calculator, right? If you weren't sure maybe about two cubed, you could enter that into your calculator and you'd see it was eight. Two to the fourth, 16. And then you can continue on with that. But let's spot the pattern here. What's the pattern? How do I move from one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16? And I'm hoping that you're seeing the pattern as I keep multiplying by a constant, and specifically, I'm multiplying by two. All right, so I want you to see that to go from y value to y value, as x increases by one, the y values double. All right, and let's see what's happening on the linear growth side of things. Well, if I plug in zero, I have two times zero, which is zero. I'm gonna erase this x to the first. All right, here we go, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, 2 times 4 is 8, 10, and then 12. And I hope we can see the pattern along these y values. So again, as x increases by 1, what happened to our y values? 
Well, they kept changing. They were increasing, just like this was increasing, right? But they were increasing, not so much multiplying by two, but the pattern here was that I added two to get from y value to y value. So in this example, I multiplied, or I should say in this function, I was multiplying by a constant. And for this function, I was adding a constant. So let's just compare and contrast that so we have it. So whenever, oh, I'll put a little note here. Whenever you add a constant to go from y value, one y value to the next y value, that is linear growth. And when I say add a constant, you could also have um, subtracted a constant. That would be linear decay. Now, if you're ever in the situation where you're multiplying by a constant, right, because here we were multiplying by two, when you multiply by a constant, that's going to be exponential growth. Right, because my numbers kept doubling. They were getting larger and larger and larger. And again, multiplying by a constant, that's, that's basically the same also as dividing by a constant. Because keep in mind, when you divide by a number, you're multiplying by the reciprocal. And when you divide by a constant, let's say I was taking each of these numbers and dividing them by two, that would have been exponential decay. So with both linear modeling and exponential modeling, you can grow and decay. Your, number, your y values can get larger or smaller. It just depends on whether you're adding slash subtracting a constant or multiplying, dividing by a constant. All right, and in terms of which function is growing faster, I think you can see that the exponential function is growing a lot faster, right? We went, we started at one here, and went to 64, here it was zero to 12. So this got a lot larger, a lot faster. So the exponential function is growing faster. All right. And in this case, that function was two to the x. And I had kind of joked at the top of this that I had asked my boss, or I told my boss I'd work for $1 on my first year. And I want you to think, like, I'm gonna be a teacher for about 30 years. So let's say I worked one year and I made a dollar, and then my second year, I doubled that. So he paid me a whopping $2. Here's my third year. Here's my fourth year. Oops, I'm sorry, I multiplied that by four. I meant to multiply it by two. I keep, I need to double. So second year salary third year salary, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I'm at 20 now. So at year 20, I'd be making a cool $524,288. I gotta get to year 30. All right, so 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So let's take a look at my ending salary. My last year, 30 years, let's say I started working when I was 24, I'd be retiring at 54. How much would I have made that year? $536,870,912. Practically what I make today, maybe a little bit more, but I hope you can see that exponential growth is awesome, all right? At least it can be awesome when you talk about money. It's super fast and super great. All right, so with that, let's head on over to example two and practice a couple of these functions on our calculator. I'll see you in a bit, bye.